Anthony Hartwig here with another installment of the segment we've been doing all summer, Living the Dream. We've been talking to softball players that have gotten to where all the softball players that we cover here at YSN want to be. And our next guest on the program is Celine Funky from Louisville and the Cardinal and the first Louisville Cardinal we've been able to have on the podcast. Celine, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. You've been able to do so many great things in your career, but before we talk about all that, we want to start at the beginning. We want to bring you back to picking up softball and kind of your first memories of the sport and what made you fall in love with it. Yeah, I mean, I remember, so I played three sports growing up. I played soccer, basketball, and softball. I remember softball being the first sport that I tried. Um, Grew up a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan. My dad is from St. Louis, so Albert Pujols, uh, Yadier Molina, those were like my idols. Um, So I just remember going out to the park with my dad, hitting off a tee, um, and then I guess from there, it just got me to the University of Louisville, but it took a a long time to get there for sure. Yeah, you know, I think it took took quite a bit to get from tee work to uh, Division I Power 5 softball. Um, When did it kind of shift from something you were just doing for fun, you liked it, to okay, I'm pretty good at this. I can put really a lot of work into this and I can make it something special. I think that I always, I I loved the grind. Truthfully, I know a lot of people don't love the morning workouts or what, you know, whatever it is that comes with being um, or getting to the point of being a division one athlete, but I I honestly love the grind. So um, I was always working out. That was never really a problem, but I probably got really serious about it in high school. Um, once my high school coach said, you know, I really think you could make it to a, a power five division one school. And that was kind of always the dream. I didn't know what sport I wanted it to be in. But once she said that, I, I started hitting lessons. I really started playing travel ball. So truthfully, my um, get serious about softball, so to speak, was a little bit later than most. Um, but I, I do think it made me a better overall athlete, continuing to play um, three sports throughout my entire life. How much did you believe it? Like, really, when when your coach told you, hey, I think you're going to be D1 Power 5. I mean, did you really, really buy that as soon as she said it? I I think so. I mean, I feel like I've always had the confidence. I knew that I was a good athlete. Um, that didn't mean that I was a good softball player. So that's exactly what I needed to narrow down on was, you know, my hitting. In college, everybody can field. Hitters are going to play. And that's that's what I really needed to, to narrow into. Talk about your recruiting process, you know, the things you went through and, and what finally made, you know, Louisville a place that you wanted to go and, and be at home with. Yeah. So like I said, I didn't get serious about softball till later. Um, I think I only played really two or three years of true travel ball. Um, So my recruiting process was very late overall. Um, I was the last recruit of my class. I got recruited by um, some mid-major schools, uh, a lot of locals in the area. Um, I was also getting recruited for soccer a little bit at the time. So Um, some schools decided to say, yeah, you can play soccer and softball. Um, so truthfully, Louisville was the only power five offer that I had, um, growing up, I always thought I wanted to go far away from home, but I think as you get older, you realize that you want your parents in the stands. Um, at that point, my grandparents were still living here. So I wanted my grandma to be able to come see me play. Um, so that's why I ended up going with Louisville, but a lot of it was camps and then, Truthfully, those those couple years of travel ball, I got luckily enough exposure. I mean, right play, right place at the right time, and had a good game at the right time. Um, but my my hitting coach also had sent a, another a previous player from Carmel, which is where I'm from, to the University of Louisville, like three or four years ago. So he had a relationship with the coach as well, and encouraged her to come out and watch me play. So a lot of combination of luck, and then just um, like I said, right place, right time. What was uh, signing day like for you? Because you said it would it was a dream to be a Power Five athlete, and you commit, and then you know you're you're sitting for a little bit, but then you sign on that dotted line, you make it a reality, you make it, you know, absolute fact that you're a Division One Power Five softball player. What was that like for you? It was awesome. I mean, everybody sees the signing days and and how exciting they are. I mean, to have your your family come in. Carmel does a, a whole big thing for signing day. So they've got the table all set up. Um, family comes in for pictures, the whole nine. So it was awesome. I mean, it, it doesn't, I guess, truly feel real, I think, until you step on to, to campus. But signing those dotted lines, I mean, it definitely gets you excited. 
you know, if your community is anything like the ones up here that we cover, as soon as you make that commitment to a power five school, everyone kind of knows about it. Everyone kind of, you become a hometown hero, as you could say. What was that like for you kind of going through the community and, and being able to maybe help out a lot of other girls, maybe a little bit younger than you, try to reach their dreams while you were still there and, and that being that hometown hero in your community? Yeah, I mean, do I feel like a hero? I don't know about all that. Um, Carmel, like I said, it's a huge high school. We have over 5,000 kids at the school um, each year. I bet there's close to 60, 80 commits. So it's a huge school. There's there's a ton of athletic talent, which I was very fortunate to grow up in. Um, but it is really cool when when you get to that point. We always used to run camps. I mean, you do it at the at the collegiate level as well. But I mean, those little girls, when they come in, they look at you like you are you are the star. You are an Olympian almost, as we have the Olympics going on right now. Um, so I think that's a really, really cool feeling. And just being able to give back to the sport um, is, is huge. So I've asked everyone this. Uh, what was your welcome to call it softball moment? The, the, real, the, the moment you realized that this is a different world and I'm in a different reality now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it happens day one when you when you walk onto campus, you know, you kind of think you're you're that girl. Right. You've always been like the best player on the team. Um, and now you're with a bunch of people who were all the best player on their team. So I think that's very humbling. But the one moment I specifically remember is, I mean, I came into Louisville as a, a power righty hitter. Um, never had been on the left side and actually the, I guess it was the week after the season started my freshman year, my head coach asked me to move to the left side. I'd never hit on the left side before. Um, you know, you, you grow up, you're this power hitter, you're in the four hole, everything else you get to college and now you're, they're switching over to the other side just because you have speed. So I think it was uh, very humbling and, and very important to know that everybody has a role and you may not know what yours is when you step in the door, but you'll, you'll build into it. Everyone knows when you go from high school to college, it's a big step up. You're going to fail a lot more, especially that first year. How did you handle the mentality of just failing a little bit more and, you know, the softball level going up. And like you said, the coaches being a lot more, I guess, able to pick out things that you need to improve on than maybe you were taught in high school. So what, what did you do to kind of um, get through all that mental stuff? Yeah. I mean, softball is a huge mind game, right? I mean, you fail more than um, you succeed, which once again, very humbling sport. Um, but I think it's just the mindset. I think you have to remember back to all the times that you were successful, specifically in those slumps or, um, you know, it, it freshman year. I mean, I only got a couple of bats, nothing crazy. I didn't, I wasn't a starter till my sophomore year. So, um, I think you just have to always remember those successes. I think that truthfully, my mental game probably could have been better. Um, not all the resources that are there now were there when I walked into, um, the university of Louisville. So I think it's, it's great how it's grown, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a mental game. And, and I, what I did is I always thought back to all my successes. And that kind of brought me back to uh, status quo. One of the things that I think you left in Louisville and the people will always remember you remember you as is the energy you put on the field. I mean, you look through every picture that Louisville posts of you, you're always screaming at something. Um, <laughs> how, how did you kind of bring that energy to the game, especially at that level? Um, talk about what, what it took to always be at almost 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's always kind of been my role. I'm kind of the the crazy person. My friends and teammates always joke there. I'm the person that every other team hates unless they're on your team. And I, I honestly love that reputation. Like um, my teammates love me because I love them, but I'm the obnoxious, never shut up person on the other team. And I'm completely fine with that. Um, and I think as I got older, like moved into a captain role, you know, younger underclassmen are looking up to you. Um, you've got to be on every day. You got to fake it till you make it. Um, doesn't matter if you've had a bad day, whatever it is, the team needs you. Um, so I think that if I could do anything, it's not that I can go three for three every day. I can't promise the team that, but I can bring energy and attitude every day. And that's something that I can decide when I walk onto the field. Someone's got to be the villain, right? Right. <laughs> you know, um, when you think about adversity, you can't go through a career without facing some kind of you know bumps in the road. What do you think your biggest form of adversity has been in your career, and how did you kind of get through it? Yeah, I would say uh, injury. Truthfully, I dislocated my shoulder. Uh, my gosh, it was going into my junior year. 
um, dislocated my shoulder right before Thanksgiving, had torn some labrums. And um, that year I was looking at a starting spot in center field. I had started in right and left the previous year. We had a new coaching staff and I just made the decision that I wasn't going to get surgery. Um, it didn't make sense. I, I felt good enough to play. Plan was to get it the summer after my junior season. Um, but after that, I was like, I still don't really want to do it. The recovery is really long. Um, so I actually decided to play through it all the way through my fifth year. Um, so had a ton of shoulder issues. Probably, honestly, not many people knew about it other than my team. Um, but that was huge adversity. I mean, it was constant pain, constant rehab. Um, but I think life throws things at you. And if that's the worst thing I had in, in my college career, you know, I never had to sit out of a game because of it. Um, I think that it teaches you a lot of grit. And, and that was probably the biggest piece of adversity I had to overcome. You did get, take that fifth year. You got it. What was it like going through like your senior year COVID? Oh, gee. Okay. Well, I guess I get to come back for one more year in 2021 and try to finish out your career with a, a solid season. And you absolutely did your senior year. So what was it like going through, you know, 2020, having to you know deal with maybe this could be my last year, all that uncertainty that, that COVID brought and then being able to absolutely go out with a bang in 2021? Yeah, I think like everybody else, COVID happened so fast. Um, you know, we were getting ready to pack up and go to Boston College and we're at practice and everyone's like, oh, I think we're going to head home early. And then essentially later that day, I'm, I'm at the mall with some teammates and um, we get a tweet from the NCAA just saying that our season and, and at that point, what I thought my career was over. So uh, it was upsetting. I think that a lot of that stuff could have been done better, but at the end of the day, very blessed to get that that fifth year. Um, it worked out for my education as well. I had already started my MBA, so I was basically able to, in five years, finish my grad school. Um, so although COVID was a terrible thing for a lot of people, truthfully, it ended up being a blessing for me. And I was super fortunate to get one last ride with, with my teammates. One of the things that I've also liked talking about uh, with these players that we've had on this summer is finding identity outside of softball. It's always been hard for players to take it so seriously and work so hard for their dreams. You know, they're putting so much time in the sport. They get engulfed in the, the, the identity aspect of they seeing themselves as more than a softball player. So when did you kind of figure that out? And how is it like for you going through um, trying to figure out, you know, what you are outside of softball? Yeah, I think that, is super hard, right? I mean, you you literally spend every waking day of your life up to that point building for your sport. Um, and it's, it's really tough when it all comes to an end. But um, my dad told me, he was like, all good things must come to an end. And he's exactly right. I had a fabulous career. I got a great education out of it. Um, and I decided I was looking at, you know, different career paths. And I decided to go into financial advising. I I love it because I, I get that competitive nature. I mean, that's exactly what sales is, but um, I get to talk to people and I just, I love what I do now. Um, and then of course I miss softball. So I actually do coach some private lessons on the side, nothing crazy, just a couple days a week, but it gets me my, my quote unquote fix of really missing softball. And um, I've really enjoyed even just picking up like, you know, sand volleyball games. I've done some slow pitch games. I've gotten into bowling. So I like to stay busy and I love that, you know, that locker room mentality of being on a team. Um, and I think that I found that and I obviously will always miss softball and miss my experiences, but um, I am, it, it's hard to move on, but I'm, I'm glad with where I ended up. With giving these private lessons, like you said you do, what has it been like kind of giving back to the next generation and, and seeing what kids are like now and, and trying to compare it to what you went through and, and trying to give them as much advice as you possibly can? Yeah, I I love coaching. I, I coach anywhere from like 8 to 15. Most of my private lessons, though, are, you know, 11 to 15 or so, those, those little bit older kids where – they are trying to start getting serious. Um, I absolutely love it. I think that, you know, if their parents are, are paying for their kid to go to a private lesson, you're getting the good kids. You don't have to deal with the politics of a team or anything like that. So I love it. I do feel like I'm able to give back to, to the sport that's given me so much. Um, and I think that's huge. So if anything, I'm obviously coaching them, but also teaching them really what it takes internally and mentally to get to that next level and get to where they want to go. What do you think is like the most asked question from these kids that they, they want to know about like, you know, hey, what did you do to do this? Like, what do they ask you the most? 
I think they just ask the main thing I feel like at that age specifically is the recruiting piece of it. So, you know, how did you get recruited? How did you decide that you wanted to go to Louisville? Those are, are typically the main ones. Um, but it's interesting. I mean, everybody's recruiting, uh, you know, path is so different. Mine is very different than pretty much all of my teammates. So, um, but yeah, I would say that's probably the, the most asked question. Your recruiting world was also different because back then, I mean, you could have been recruited before you even stepped foot on a high school field yeah. if you wanted to be. That was a wild, wild West version of softball yeah. <laughs> back in the day. Um, one of the things that we've been asking all these players um, towards the end of the interview is, what is one thing that you kind of know now after you went through your career that you wish you would have known when you stepped on campus in the first year? I think, and I think a lot of people say this, but it really does fly. I mean, I feel like I walked into Louisville, couldn't have been more than a year or two ago. And looking back now, that was eight years ago when I stepped on campus. So, you know, when you're going through the grind, there's there's always tough parts to it. Like nobody wants to get up for a 5 a.m. workout. I get all those things, but um, looking back, you're going to miss it. And it really, really does fly. So just taking advantage of, of every day that you've got out there. And it's so much easier said than done. But I think that's what I tried to bring with my energy and passion. It, it was something that I could control every day. Your attitude is something you can control and you, um, you know, it's, it's a full-time job plus some. So you want to enjoy it and make sure that you're getting the most out of it. If you're going to learn anything from Celine Funky, it's always bring that energy because you brought it every day. Celine, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us. One of the things that we also do uh, before we let you go is we like to give the players that we interview the chance to take the limelight off themselves. We've been talking about you for about 15 minutes. So we want to give you the chance to talk about the people in your life that got you to where you are and give some shout outs out and, and give the limelight out to, to the people that are in your support system. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge shout out to my family. My parents are incredible. Um, they, I think they only missed if I had to count maybe like three college games, my whole career, um, and they were at Syracuse, which most of the time got snowed out. So uh, my parents have been nothing but supportive. They, uh, you know, whatever sport it was, they never forced me to pick. They never forced me to, um, you know, play anything I didn't want to play. I was never yelled at after games. Um, I, I just didn't have those parents. And I think it allowed me to love the game for as long as I did. So I definitely want to give a shout out to them. And then I want to give a shout out to my brother. My brother has... Um, he's overcome a lot and he's legally blind. He's had all of these obstacles, but you would never know. He's done so much with his life and I don't tell him enough how much of an inspiration he is to me. So, um, really just shout out to my family. They're, they're incredible. And I would not be where I am today without them. God bless them going to Syracuse. <laughs> that is not fun. Not no, fun. no, never no. fun to head to Syracuse in, uh, April. <laughs> No shade, but, you know, snow right. is not softball weather. Right. Uh, Celine, we want to thank you again so much for coming on, talking about your softball journey, helping the next generation kind of learn from your footpaths. And uh, we wish you the best of luck in everything you're doing in the future. Congratulations on your engagement, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I know that wedding's coming up very soon. So we wish yeah. you the best of luck in all of that and everything that you're doing. And uh, we look forward to talking to you real soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.